Amen. Our words this morning come from the Hebrew Scriptures, from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3. And Malachi says, thus says the Lord, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings up to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and in former years. These are the words of God to the people of God. Be Please be seated. Malachi is a messenger of God. In fact, the name Malachi means my messenger. So he's named what his job is. And he's speaking to the people who have returned to Jerusalem from exile. They are a returned people. And they are back home, and they are grousing. That's what they do. We know what the Israelites do, and they always grouse, kind of like us. But what they're saying is, you know, we're back now. We're back in Jerusalem. We're back at the temple, and what we really want is God to come. We want that day of judgment because those guys who were mean to us, they deserve it. We can't wait till God comes and judges with all righteousness. Whoa, they're going to get it. And the messenger comes and says, you think they're going to get it? think you need to look a little closer to home, says the messenger. The messenger is saying, you know, since you've been back in Dodge, since you've been back here in Jerusalem, you're not behaving so well yourselves. You've brought back some habits, some lazy habits from when you were in exile, and they are contaminating what you are doing. What the message is, is that you all need to be purified so you can hear the message and you can receive it. Things need to be taken away so that you can then be the pure people of God. And that doesn't mean pure like a race, but pure like their heart. And then the messenger Malachi goes on to say, what this repentance, it looks like, is like the refiner's fire or fuller's soap. What, you may ask, is fuller's soap? I will tell you, because I did research it. Fullers are those who clean the wool and prepare the wool to be made into cloth. So fuller's soap is a heavy, heavy, heavy-duty bleach. They bleach and bleach and bleach the wool, and then not only do they bleach and bleach and bleach the wool, but they kind of beat it into the shape it needs to be in in order to be used as cloth. That's one analogy. The other analogy is the refiner's fire. The metal is thrown into the fire until all the gooky stuff is burned away and all gooky, that is the actual word that they use, the gooky stuff. It's a technical term, I'm sure you'll figure it out. The gooky stuff is burned away until then all that's left is the shining gold or silver. In fact, a, a silver smith would say, that she burns that metal until she can see her reflection in it. 
so, if we are going to be washed with Fuller's soap, we are going to be bleached and bleached and bleached and then mushed and pulled and flattened until we're in the perfect shape to be used as righteous tools of God's work. Or, we don't want, I don't want to be with the soap. Okay, so you can have the fire. You can have your choice. So go into the fire and burn all that crud away until God sees only God's image in what is left. That's what Malachi says is being prepared to receive the messenger. Move to the New Testament, we have Luke and, and speaking for John the Baptist saying, prepare the way of the messenger. Lay the road straight, take out all the curves, plow down the mountains, build out the valleys till everything is level and cleared so there are no obstacles for the messenger's message to get through. There's a story that helps illustrate this. A woman was looking for the meaning of life. She wanted to understand. And so she went far and wide. She traveled, she traveled to monks and rabbis and priests and, and popes and bishops and district superintendents and retired pastors. And she just went everywhere asking, what is the meaning of life? And, and she questioned, questioned, questioned. And, and, and she prodded and prodded. <clears throat> Finally, she ended up on a mountaintop. Kind of, you know, I can picture Tibet. And she went to this door of a wizened old sage. And he invited her in and he said, come uh, have a cup of tea, we'll talk. And he started to pour her tea and she started talking. And she talked and she talked and she talked and she talked and she said, I think it's this, I think it's that, it could be that, it could be this. And she just kept talking and talking. In the meantime, he just kept pouring the tea and pouring the tea and pouring the tea. And finally she said, whoa, it's overflowing. My cup is full. Stop. And he turned to her and said, exactly. Come again when your head isn't so full. And I'll be glad to speak with you. We come wanting to prepare but we're so full, we can't receive. We're so full of obstacles, mountains and valleys that need to be laid straight. We're full of the dross, perhaps, that needs to be burned off. We've been playing in the hay and the dirt and the muck, and so our wool needs to be bleached a little bit. Any one of those are the image for what John the Baptist is calling repentance. Repent, turn back. When John, ba when John is in the desert saying, make way for the messenger. Repent so that you can receive. Malachi is saying, look at what you're doing. Be purified so that you then can hear the message. But it's more for us than just hearing the message. And the message, of course, is the good news of Christ. God loves you. God loves you. We have to clean, burn away, get rid of the obstacles so we can at least accept that reality. And once we have that reality, then we become the Malachi's. We become the messengers that can then take that same message of God loves you. God loves you. God created this world for justice and peace. 
That is the hope that peace will come. But we can't be the righteous messengers of that love until we have been purified, until we have let go. One of the analogies that came as we talked yesterday morning at, at Saturday Morning Bread was it's like those tools they use in surgery. Where's my surgical nurse? Okay. You can use the tools. I mean, a scalpel is a scalpel, and it will cut pretty much whether it's dirty or clean. But if it's dirty, not such a good instrument. It can leave behind all kinds of yuck. In order to be a good tool, that scalpel has to be sterilized. It has to be in the refiner's fire. It has to be washed with fuller soap. It has to be sterile. We can be the tools to spread the news. But unless we make ourselves right, unless we turn around and accept God's love, unless we get rid of the obstacles to receiving that love, the obstacles that we carry that make our message tainted to those that we would deliver it to, we cause more harm sometimes than good. As we think about this passage, as we think about, gosh, Fuller's soap sounds like it would hurt, probably has a scrub brush attached to it. Fire, pretty hot and will hurt. But what is it that we do need to have hard scrubbed away from our hearts, our minds, that keep us in those same old patterns year after year? The prayer of confession talked about memories, things that we've done that God forgave us for so long ago that we hold on to. Those are the things that need to be burned away finally once for all. We need to let go. We need to let go. God's forgiven it. What is it that we need refining this season as individuals, as a church? What needs to be burned away? What needs to be scrubbed out? What needs to be let go and forgotten so that this year, this year, we can accept a new and a fresh the message of God incarnate love with us so that we then can take that out and be that beacon that makes the road straight for others. Let's be in prayer. Ask God, yeah, we're like the people in Jerusalem. We want that purifying fire to come so that we can be on the other side. What, Lord, do we need to give up? Let us be in prayer and let us listen.